The terrorist attack on Coptic Christians in Egypt highlights the urgency for President Trump to designate the Muslim Brotherhood as a terrorist organization. Hello, I'm Cynthia Fairhart, a fellow of the Middle East Forum, here to give you a quick primer on why this designation is critical. The Muslim Brotherhood was founded in my native Egypt in 1928 by Hassan al a charismatic school teacher who called for a religious revival culminating in the establishment of a global Islamic caliphate. Toward this end, the Brotherhood established a public apparatus designed to win the hearts and minds and gain political power and a secret apparatus of clandestine operatives to kill and maim those who get in its way. Branches of the Muslim Brotherhood, nominally under the control of Egyptian movement supreme guide quickly emerged across the Middle East and the world. Members of the Brotherhood have been directly involved in establishing most Sunni Islamic terrorist groups in the world today. In some cases, this affiliation is very open and explicit. The Palestinian terrorist group Hamas, for example, openly declared itself a Palestinian wing of the Muslim Brotherhood in Article 2 of its 1988 Charter. In most cases, these affiliations are not only kept sacred, even if they're common knowledge. In Egypt, the Brotherhood publicly declared its commitment to non-violence in the 1970s while establishing underground jihadi networks such as Al Jamal Islamiya, which was responsible for the 1981 assassination of Egyptian President Anwar Sadat and countless acts of terrorism. The founder of Al Jamal Islamiya, radical brotherhood ideologue Omar Abdurrahman, later masterminded the 1993 bombings of the World Trade Center in the United States. In 1985, Three Muslim Brotherhood leaders operating out of Pakistan, Abdullah Azam, Osama bin Laden, and Ayman al Zawahri, founded the organization that would later call itself Al Qaeda. The Caliph of Islamic State, commonly known as ISIS, Abu Bakr al Baghdadi, was a member of the Iraqi Muslim Brotherhood before going underground. While the Muslim Brotherhood in Egypt and elsewhere deploys violence, its representatives in the West often use different tactics. Even ostensibly non-violent Brotherhood institutions and affiliates pose an immense danger by working to fund Brotherhood-affiliated terror groups. In the United States, Brotherhood activists established a number of prominent Muslim organizations, many of which were later named by federal prosecutors as unindicted co-conspirators during the 2007-2008 Holy Land Foundation terrorism financing trial. The Council on American Islamic Relations is the worst of the bunch. No less than six of its former officials have been convicted of terror-related charges. Equally pernicious is the role of the ostensibly nonviolent Brotherhood leaders and affiliated media outlets in indoctrinating local Muslim communities and legitimizing terrorist violence. The Brotherhood's principal spiritual leader, Qatar-based Yusuf al-Qaradawi, and others speaking from the safety of friendly host countries have issued fatwas legitimizing suicide bombings and attack on the U.S. forces in Iraq and other practices precisely in order to push them in the waiting arms of jihadists. To say nothing of the grotesque hatred of non-Muslims that is central to their teachings. Things are a little different in the US, where the Brotherhood affiliates promote social insularity and distrust of law enforcement among the Muslim community, but the effect is the same to ripen them for violence. In the wake of reports in recent months that the Trump administration is considering designating the Brotherhood a terrorist organization and the, and, and the introduction of congressional legislation to this effect, Brotherhood sympathizers, including some Arab governments, have launched a well-financed 
public relations campaign that has thoroughly penetrated mainstream media, including op-ed and premier newspapers. They will tell you that the Muslim Brotherhood is too popular among Muslims worldwide to mess with. It's a lie. The Brotherhood's most celebrated electoral victory in the Middle East, the irregular election of Mohamed Mursi as president of Egypt in 2012, was short-lived, precipitating the largest anti-government protest in Middle East history. In the West, support for the Brotherhood exists only among a thin layer of radicalized Muslims. A 2011 Gallup poll pegged support for care among US Muslims at less than 12%. A 2015 British government inquiry into the Brotherhood found that its activities in Britain appear to be unable to generate any grassroots support inside the UK. Nevertheless, many Western governments have treated them as bona fide representatives of Muslim communities. Thus, in addition to compromising the ability of the Brotherhood to foment terrorism, designating it a terrorist group will help employ moderate Muslims in the United States and abroad who are risking life and limb to fight extremists. The United States needs to join other nations that have designated the Muslim Brotherhood as a terrorist group. America cannot really win its war against radical Islam until it squarely takes a side.